starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, hello everyone and welcome to the Cisco Meraki webinar series. My name is Katie Lane. I'm a product marketing manager here at Cisco Meraki. And today we have a really, really exciting deployment that we're going to be talking about. And we actually have uh, Terry Pettigrew who runs the deployment with us on the line to talk specifically about Royal Victoria Yacht Club. Terry, are you on the line with us? I am on the line with you, yeah, good morning. Good morning, and thanks so much for joining. Uh, we have a, a pretty tight agenda here, so we'll try to fit everything in. I'm going to give a brief background of Cisco Meraki. Uh, for those of you who are less familiar, and just a quick overview of some of the benefits that cloud networking offers to uh, this, these types of deployments specifically. And then we're going to dive right into the case study today, talk about the Royal Victoria Yacht Club deployment exactly how they're using the Meraki devices, uh, some of their specific use cases and what they've run into along the way as far as deployment and then operating uh, their own network. And we'll do a live demo as well of that deployment. I also want to point out that I have one of my colleagues here with me, Tanya, and she is going to be available to answer your questions throughout the presentation. And also if you have specific questions for myself or for Terry about the deployment, uh, Definitely ask those as well, and Tanya will relay those to us as we go through the presentation as well. And a recording of this presentation it will be available at meraki.cisco.com forward slash webinars. So if you want to uh, look back on this afterwards, it will definitely be available. All right, with that said, we also have some really exciting news. We're going to be giving out a free 802.11 in access point to all of the qualified IT professionals on the line. And all that we ask is that you give us a call and confirm your shipping information. So you should be receiving a reminder email uh, after the webinar today with the details of your Cisco Meraki rep. And go ahead and give them a call, and we'll get your access point right out to you. All right, with that taken care of, let's talk a little bit about Cisco Meraki for those of you who are less familiar. So Cisco Meraki is a complete line of cloud-managed networking devices. So from wireless LAN, uh, also through to switching and security appliances, and also mobile device management. So managing all the way from the edge of your network, the fire the wall, all the way down through to the client devices as well. So a really full stack solution. And what's exciting about the Meraki portfolio is that we've really tightly integrated the hardware with the software to communicate with our cloud management services. And we'll be taking you through a look at the dashboard in our presentation today, which is what we use to manage and monitor all of these devices that are on site. So Cisco Meraki is the leader in cloud managed networking. We've been operating in the cloud since around 2006, so we've had quite a bit of time to really iterate over the technology, bring out new features and functionality, and also harden the technology as well. We've been recognized for innovation by a number of organizations for this technology, uh, namely Gartner and InfoWorld, and CRN is one of the coolest technologies out there right now. And over here on the right, you can see a brief overview of the product lines and we'll be touching on most of these today in the presentation. So wireless, enterprise security, switches, and mobile device management. So taking a step back and uh, for a second, thinking about why a cloud networking solution might be something that you'd be interested in in your environment. And I always like to start with some of these uh, higher level thoughts. Uh, for instance, what are the challenges that you're really trying to solve in your organization? Some of the things that we're seeing are just the proliferation of smart devices, over a billion smart devices out on the market right now. Uh, so one of the things that's extremely powerful about the Meraki devices is the ability to integrate that device management with your wireless network and with your switching network and also with the policies that you enable on those devices. So being able to gain visibility all the way down into that device level and also if you want to manage those devices as well. Something else that's uh, extremely powerful is uh, we're seeing new business applications. And here we have Square depicted on the left. 
mobile credit card processing all the way down on the mobile device. And one of the things that the Cisco Meraki devices offer is a very seamless and easy way to separate your guest solution from that turnkey secure solution where you might want to be uh, doing credit card processing or maybe need for PCI compliance in your wireless network. And so the Cisco Meraki solution makes it very easy to offer those solutions and also segment those different types of traffic in your network. And finally, uh, thinking about the types of applications that were, are becoming more and more common and also really taking over our, our bandwidth in a lot of our networks, video and rich media applications. And one of the things that Cisco Meraki also tries to make extremely easy is being able to identify those different types of traffic in your network. Uh, and not only that, being able to prioritize and limit different types of applications as well. So offering quality of service and layer seven application traffic shaping right down at the access point level as well as uh, at the security appliance is an extremely powerful tool to really optimize uh, your available bandwidth and also make sure your network is running as smoothly as it can be. Because always adding more bandwidth isn't, uh, isn't always available to you. So here we can really solve that problem in a smarter way. And I also want to take a second to talk about uh, one of the huge strengths of cloud networking in general. And that's the fact that it's really built for multi-site management. So depending on what type of deployment you have, here we have a few different examples depicted of deployments where we have just a lot of different sites that we're trying to manage. If you have a hundred different sites that you're trying to gain visibility into and make sure each of those sites is up and running effectively, that can be quite a challenge. And Cisco Meraki uh, really tries to make that as seamless as possible. Here on the left we see a snap snapshot of actually the Telmex uh, network, which is an Eastern-wide hotspot and 3G offload network. And here we can see they have quite a lot of locations. And from this page, we can understand what's happening at each of those sites. Uh, we can see that which networks are green and up and running, maybe which networks are indicated as red and might be having a problem. So it makes it extremely easy to identify and drill down into the problem areas and also have peace of mind that all of those other sites are running as they should be. So I also want to take one second to talk about the cloud networking architecture. And I don't want to spend too much time here because I really want to get into our case study for today. But just a quick high level overview of uh, what cloud networking looks like and how this might differ from a traditional deployment that you might be familiar with. So here we have a, a 10,000 foot view of what might be happening if you are managing a network uh, via the cloud. So we have on the bottom left our on-premise hardware. Here we have a wireless access point and a switch and they're sitting on site. Uh, but as we mentioned before, these devices could be anywhere. They could be at a campus or headquarter site, or maybe a, a branch office or a retail store. But as long as these devices are connected to the internet, they're communicating to our centralized cloud hosted management. Uh, servers. So Meraki has data centers around the world, fully redundant and geographically distributed. And these devices can communicate to those data centers, uh, send them updates on what's happening, what their status is, if they're up and running, and also what's going on on the network, who's connecting and what applications they're using. So as an administrator, over here on the bottom right, we can log in via our browser gain access to the cloud hosted management platform or the dashboard is how we'll refer to this throughout the session and gain visibility into those devices and what's happening on those various networks. So it makes it extremely easy to gain visibility and also uh, this solution has security from end to end. So the communication from devices to the cloud is, uh, is fully secured as well as from the browser to the cloud that's secured over HTTPS and also two-factor authentication if necessary. And one thing I definitely want to zoom into a little bit is the communication from those devices that are sitting on site uh, as they're communicating to the cloud. Uh, one of the things that 
is very powerful about this solution is that we actually separate our management traffic that goes through the cloud from the actual uh, data traffic. So here we can see that uh, user traffic, the red line, that's either going to stay locally on your LAN or go directly to its destination somewhere else on the WAN. But what's important to note is that it doesn't actually traverse through the Meraki cloud, through the Meraki data centers. The only thing that's actually communicated to the data centers is management traffic. So uh, those changes you might be making from the cloud, uh, configuration changes, or, or getting updates on what's happening with these devices, but the actual traffic itself never traverses the, through the cloud. And we call this an out-of-band control plane. And this type of architecture offers many benefits uh, for this solution, and especially for enterprise networks. Uh, one of the most important ones being that it's extremely secure. Because we're not passing any user traffic through the cloud, it allows the solution to be fully HIPAA compliant and PCI compliant. It's also extremely reliable. Uh, we have multiple cloud data centers and we have a 99.99% uptime SLA for communication to those data centers. We also have a hot backup if anything were to happen and immediately fail over to a different data center. But you might be wondering, well, what happens if I can't communicate to the cloud? What if my internet connection goes down? And absolutely that is something that we have to take into account. These things absolutely happen. Uh, but what's great about the Meraki solution is that all of the configuration is also kept locally on the devices itself. So even if you can't communicate to the cloud, all of your devices continue to function just as they had before. And as soon as that connection is resumed, they'll be able to check in with the cloud, send some updates about what was happening, and pull down any new configuration changes that might have been made during that time. So that is my uh, very quick overview of Cisco Meraki for those of you who are new to this solution. But at this time I really want to jump into our case study so that we can dive into some of the details and look at the Royal Victoria Yacht Club network. Uh, so Terry, are you uh, still with us? I'm still with you and still awake here. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Hopefully I didn't uh, speed through that too fast, but really excited to look at your deployment. Um, could you, would you mind telling us a little bit about uh, what you have set up at the Royal Victoria Yacht Club and what your organization looks like. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll give you a quick background on the Royal Victoria Yacht Club itself. So uh, located in uh, on, on Vancouver Island in, uh, in British Columbia, so we're right down on the southern tip of Vancouver Island. Um, as, uh, as the slide says here, we're, we are one of the, the oldest uh, yacht clubs uh, in, in British Columbia, in North America, in fact. Um, and, and so we've got a, a club that, that consists, roughly speaking, of about a thousand members. Um, we've actually got uh, three facilities. Our main one is located in a, a, a place called Cadborough Bay, uh, which is um, close to the city of Victoria. And then we've got two two smaller. Um, one is a one is a marina that's uh, located closer to uh, Sydney, BC. Uh, it's called Seam Haven, and uh, and then an outstation on uh, on Salt Spring Island. So we actually have uh, the, the three facilities themselves. Um, the, the club itself is, uh, is, is all about uh, messing around with uh, boats on the water. Uh, so we do uh, quite a bit of, of organized sail racing, uh, sail training. Uh, as I mentioned, we do have the, um, uh, the marina facilities in both Cadboro Bay and Seam, uh, where we, we have uh, spaces for roughly about 350 boats. And then we have a, a large uh, clubhouse facility that uh, uh, has, has dining, has a, uh, an awesome pub, uh, fantastic food, um, some uh, great meeting spaces that uh, club members and uh, and the public can use by by renting the facility, um, and uh, and we we take care of the organization uh, across those uh, those three facilities as well. Very so nice. On to the next slide here. <laughs> oh, sorry. All yeah. right. So we've got, um, and we were talking about it. We've got a uh, an IT team. So the, the club, so people should understand. Although we do have a, a small staff that, that, that a small excellent staff that take, takes care of the club. Uh, you know, taking care of an IT network is not uh, necessarily the, the expertise. It's more around uh, managing the uh, the clubhouse, managing the marina facilities. But the, the you know the the philosophy is the club is, is it's a club owned by the members and and 
and a lot of the services at the club are, are provided by volunteer members. So uh, one of the volunteer committees that I'm, I'm um, part of and was asked to, to chair a few years ago is an, an IT committee. And, and we never really had that structure um, within the Yacht Club to really start to look at IT as an asset. Uh, so we've got a, a team of us um, of, of 10 members in various differing, uh, uh, various differing degrees of experience in IT, but uh, we come at it in, in being able to bring that expertise from our, essentially from our outside day jobs uh, to providing some governance around, uh, uh, around IT at the club. Uh, we do, as a, as a team, we do provide some, uh, some assistance to do some, some break fix, some upgrades. Uh, uh, we actually are doing a, uh, a large marina rebuild uh, right now at our Cadbury Bay facility. So our IT team has volunteered their time and effort and, and actually doing some of the build themselves from the IT perspective. Uh, and then we also manage um, some outside contractors that we have that provide some uh, IT support for uh, essentially providing hands and feet if, if we need it on site with um, uh, desktop upgrades and replacements and so on and so forth. And then uh, support to our, our major uh, point of sale and marina management systems that uh, that are there and on place as well. But uh, yeah, the slide is correct. We don't have a, a dedicated staff. We're just simply not large enough to uh, to warrant having somebody that's there on payroll taking care of IT on a day-to-day -day basis. Absolutely. How many people do you uh, generally serve uh, with the network? Uh, it, it varies. So we've got the network split up into a couple of different domains. So we've got um, essentially a, an administrative domain, uh, and that's that's for the staff. There's there's roughly at any given time uh, 20 to 25 staff that are accessing the network, and you know with that we're doing things like uh, all of our invoicing, our point of sale for uh, for the dining and bar facilities, uh, all of our marina management. Um, but then we, on the other side, we've, we've got a uh, essentially a guest network, um, and that's to provide uh, Wi-Fi access for uh, club members and, and guests that are coming into the club. And at any given time, you know, we see, um, you know, during the day that'll sit, you know, kind of 20 to 30 users. But when we have an event going on, that will peak up to several hundred. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I bet it's quite variable. Okay, great. So, um, so why don't you walk us through uh, why you chose Meraki and um, what you are looking to do with the, the multi-phase deployment here? Yeah, yeah. So, so that, as I mentioned, um, when we took over and started looking at um, you know, kind of the IT model in general, one of the things that we recognized at, at the Yacht Club is that more and more of the services to members were starting to, you know, effectively be delivered over the internet. Um, you know, and we started to look at the infrastructure that was there at the club, and you know, without having the governance in place, um, you know, there, there was a lot of things that were that were done um, in, in putting things in place that uh, we, we actually needed to put a little bit more structure and security around. And so, you know, the first thing was to make sure that we had uh, a network in place, you know, in terms of, of having firewalling in place. Um, that we could, uh, you know, essentially protect the, the, you know, the valuable club assets that were um, that, that were installed. And those are things like our point of sale and our accounting systems and billing systems that uh, uh, were there in place. So, um, you know, we looked at a number of different options, but yeah, ultimately ended up choosing the um, the MX security appliances for a number of different reasons. Um, one, simply to have, have the remote management capability. You know, found that to be very valuable, and, and I'll probably come back to that a couple of times during the, the, the talk. But you know, because we're not there on site, um, is you know, being able to remotely diagnose, diagnose, and troubleshoot and configure, um, you know, when you know, 99% of the time, you know, we're not there was was uh, uh, very helpful. But you know, some of the other things that we were experiencing at the club. Um, you know, was was quite a bit in terms of, of uh, uh, security violations. You know, from people hitting malicious websites, and you know, even though antivirus and that was up to date, we were finding that the antivirus deployments simply weren't catching, um, you know, uh, you know, the nastiness that was going on on a timely basis. And so, you know, most of the time, the antivirus would catch it well after the fact. You know, time, you know, in terms of weeks and that. And we we had some breaches in, in terms of uh, of incidents that that. Occurred. So we needed to put something a little bit more robust and secure in place. And then, as I mentioned as well, we have we have this three site. Although 
the Cadbro Bay facility is our major location, we have these two other facilities that we still have staff in those facilities and need to extend services out. And so uh, we also found that we could extend a th pretty easily a three-site VPN um, by creating a secure tunnel through the three uh, MX appliances that we 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 purchased and and so uh, you know we were able to have a centralized look and control of all three sites but secure the traffic that was coming back to our uh, to our main facility again for point of sale and, and some of the accounting um, things that we we did so so the, yeah so the phase one was putting in the MX security appliances um, and we, we started to use the dashboard more and more looking at all of the reporting that we were getting out of it um, and, and then, then actually moved over to, to doing some of the, uh, the, the switching and, and putting it on a, a couple of MS220 initially. And again, it was all around being able to get the remote visibility if something happened to be able to go back and, and look at uh, traffic on a port by port basis, seeing what was going on there. Uh, and again, just having that visibility through the network was great. Um, phase three is on the wireless side, and we, we actually started doing the wireless deployment um, in around uh, the November, December time this year. Uh, as I mentioned, we, we actually went through a, a major marina upgrade at Cadborough Bay um, that was completed uh, around the beginning of, of November. And so we started uh, rolling out uh, wireless not only in the clubhouse, but out, out on the docks themselves. And, uh, and that's to provide services to, uh, to members um, that are that are there on their boats and, and want Wi-Fi access, uh, but we're we're able to do a few other things um, with that uh, with that Wi-Fi as well in terms of being able to get some some better uh, uh, physical security around surveillance cameras and then do things like uh, remote weather stations and so on. Oh, that's very cool! Remote weather stations—that's <laughs> neat. I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah. All right. Well. Um, so I think now might be a good time to go actually take a look at your network. Maybe we can start walking through uh, some of the different things you have deployed. Sure. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into the dashboard. And for those of you who are new to the dashboard, uh, this is, I'm simply in Google Chrome right now, and I'm looking at an overview of, actually this is the Cisco Meraki uh, uh, corporate network right now. So here we can see we have uh, various different locations deployed, uh, but actually, right, I'm going to jump over into specifically the Royal Victoria Yacht Club network. So here we can pull up an overview of the network we've been talking about today. So here we can see the overview page, and we can actually see uh, the six different networks that uh, Terry and his team manages. And here you can see a, a, just a brief overview of exactly what's happening with those networks. So usage, clients, and if you expand this out you can see network health if uh, something has occurred and how many devices and if there are any offline. So very high level overview. Uh, Terry, do you want to walk us through maybe uh, what you have here and maybe we can jump into the MX specifically? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, the, so so what we've done is we've got our, our three sites with the three different MX appliances, and as I mentioned, in, in, in three different locations. So we we've set it up on the dashboard just to allow to individual visibility for for each one. The one that's uh, the the Cadborough Bay one, the, the CAD one, is the one that's on our main facility there. Um, yeah, you're you're more than welcome to drill into that. But it's uh, uh, you know we've got the, the three different locations that are set up in a multi-site VPN. Um, you know allows us to uh, to see that, you know what's going on in traffic at, at any given time uh, out to the internet, um, you can see that there's peaks and spikes that go on um, when we do uh, you know backups and and uh, and the like, um, uh, and then you know over the course of, of weekends and days, uh, you know this past weekend we had a had a regatta on the site, um, so you can see you know usage spikes over the over the course of the weekend as we get uh, you know more more guests using the uh, the the uh, the internet access that's uh, that's on the site as well. Absolutely. So here we are. I, yeah, this is the summary report page. So it's definitely giving me that overview of uh, what's been going on. Here's those spikes I think uh, over the weekend. Yeah. And then also a bunch of other information here too, like top clients by usage. So which clients specifically were accessing the work. Um, this is really useful, I find, too, in just making sure there are no clients that are really 
uh, using way more than they should be using. And also uh, understanding what applications are being used in the network as well, so top applications by usage. Yeah. And then... And I, as I mentioned oh. to you before, we actually do do some, we have, we have some uh, security systems set up where we do do video surveillance, and, and those become very evident that uh, you know that the, the surveillance system uses a lot of traffic locally within the network there, and that, that reports out to us as well there. That's the real-time streaming protocols that are, uh, you know, way beyond everything else there is uh, video surveillance. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that, that looks like this one here, real-time streaming probably, right? That's correct, yeah. Very cool. So um, let's see, we can also jump into the appliance status and get an overview of what's happening with this MX right now. So here you can see you know, it looks green. Uh, so your internet uplink is looking good. LAN's looking good. And we have these live tools if you wanted to do any kind of troubleshooting. Yeah. Uh, so do you ever put these into, into use? Do you have any problems? Yeah, all the time. Um, you know, we... we initially had some issues at, with a, a couple of our uh, service providers, particularly one of the uh, remote locations. Um, and yeah, we were able to use this to determine if the, because uh, uh, a lot of the time the service provider, the, the first response is, uh, well, your site must be down, but we were able to show, no, our, our, our site's up, it's your, your traffic that's slow. So we were able to help, you know, troubleshoot uh, any issues, get some, some upgrades uh, that were going to the various different sites. And then, and we've also had you know, situations where a device gets misconfigured or so on and, and, um, and starts uh, uh, flooding the internet with, with traffic and we're able to go in and, you know, look, isolate that, uh, you know, to a specific IP address and make, uh, make changes to that device as need be. Absolutely. So that would be um, this client's tab, right? Correct, yeah. Would you, um, could I click in here? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, we can we can just see you know various different clients that are that are going on. Um, you know, I, I I know what the top one is there. That's that is our our biggest use client, uh, and, and you know we can you know look and drill down and, and, and you know look at the, the number of traffic that that thing is hitting. That's uh that's actually where we we do a lot of our recording for our our, uh, our video surveillance and so on. And that um, so it, it's pretty pretty constant use of uh, pretty high throughput in, in traffic. But we can uh, so if I've misconfigured that or done something with it, it allows me to go in and, and see what the what the issue is there for sure. Yeah, this actually is pretty interesting. Um, I mean, this traffic isn't peaky at all, so it's pretty constant. And this and you can kind of isolate all the other traffic that is causing more of those peaks. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. The more the more uh, interesting thing to look at on our dashboard, I will tell you, is the is the is the wireless network um, and being able to do some of the analytics through there for sure. Absolutely, and we're getting um, a few questions from our our listeners here about the wireless network, so I definitely want to jump into that here. We got one question about um, while we're on this page about just bandwidth usage from the management traffic from uh, the devices, the Meraki devices out to yeah. the dashboard. And um, we find that it's generally about a kilobit per second per device. I don't know if you notice any impact from that or not. I'd be curious to hear no, your none thoughts. Not at all, yeah. No, it doesn't. Uh, I mean, it's just noise uh, compared to the rest of the traffic that's there. So yeah, that's not, not impactful at all at any of our sites. Very cool. We are, just to let you know, we are metered in terms of our overall internet usage. So our service provider does put a cap on our total bandwidth we're allowed to consume uh, out of each site per month, and, and we don't come anywhere close to that. But, the, you know, going through and having the um, analysis actually lets us see, and we can, you know, we, we can look into it and see if we're getting anywhere close. So we don't, we don't need to worry about it, that, you know, but it's great having that visibility. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, maybe, uh, probably not the case in this case, but, you know, maybe you're, you have more, you're paying for more bandwidth than you actually need, and you could yeah. uh, cut that down. The, the one, the one other thing I guess I would hit on with the security appliances, and, and um, it, you know, it's something that we won't drill into here because it's, it, they're, they're, you know, it's, it is some of our security setup. But, but we also do do the uh, traffic filtering through the uh, security appliance, so um, we're able to, to filter traffic, uh, you know, outbound and inbound, in and out of the internet. Um, we, we do. Uh, set up a number of different security protocols so that you know we're we're making sure that you know that machines that are inside network are not are not getting um, hit by uh, malware sites or 
you know, sites that are spreading viruses, um, uh, you know, that, that, that was a major problem for us prior to this. Um, you know, we were seeing a lot of incidents when we, when we initially put the, um, the MX appliances in place. Um, uh, you know, security events were a pretty major thing that were going on, and we've, we've really contained that in a big way. Um, and, but, you know, the biggest thing is by, by filtering out uh, machines that are going to, uh, uh, to sites that, um, you know, that, that can infect them. And, and, and so we've put a big stop to, to a lot of that, that's for sure. And that's, that's both on our admin side and, you know, on the admin side, that's a, it's a serious thing, um, you know, if, if any of the admin traffic was compromised. Uh, but also on the, on the guest access side, we've, we've stopped uh, any, any members that may be coming in and using guest Wi-Fi from, from actually getting infected and, and uh, you know, degrading the performance on the network as well. Absolutely. And is that uh, through the source fire security filtering? That's correct, or? yeah. Okay, great. Um, and I'll just, I'm going to click over to the Meraki network um, just to show everyone this page so we don't drill into yours specifically, but uh, I did want to show on the security appliance here we can just click into what the security filtering page looks like on a dashboard. Hopefully I haven't been logged out. And essentially this will uh, just show you that how easy it is to enable the source fire security filtering and basically the rule sets are constantly updated to uh, what the latest security threats are. So here we can see we have malware to detection on, and then we have the intrusion detection and prevention enabled here. And we can see, uh, we can select uh, which level of rule set uh, you want to select. So if you want extremely secure, um, and then if you want to enable prevention or not. So intrusion uh, prevention as well as detection. And here we can see some signatures that have been whitelisted as well. So uh, very quick overview of how you'd enable that. And then we can get this really nice security report. It's telling us any events that might have occurred in the network over the last day or week. And we actually have some high uh, rated alerts. We have high, medium, and low. So we have some red level alerts. And we could drill in and see exactly what uh, signature is causing those alerts. So drill into that pretty easily. So there, that's the security report that we're talking about. But essentially, you can enable that in just a couple clicks. It's extremely powerful. Yeah. All right, so let's jump into the wireless network since we are getting quite a few questions about it. Uh, so I'll go over to your Wi-Fi network here. Yeah. All right, you want to walk us through what you have set up, maybe how many access points and... Uh, yeah, uh, so we, we've got, um, uh, as you can see here as well, that we've got... Uh, um, a combination of both indoor and outdoor access points. Um, as I mentioned, the you, you can see the, the the map there of of the marina itself. Actually, that's the old map of the marina. We've we've actually now gone and, and reconfigured the the entire marina itself. And, and I actually do have it. Uh, if you click onto the overlay map there, you can actually see the uh, the foreshore map as the one that you want. Okay. Uh, and if you if you look at that, we actually do have a, a now a map of what the, the our foreshore looks like as well. And um, essentially, we've got uh, uh, four four outdoor access points that uh, basically provide coverage to the entire foreshore. We're in the midst of doing our deployment there right now. Uh, we're actually going to be putting um, uh, multi-mode fiber along the docks. We're just waiting for some of the uh, um, fire suppression systems to be finished off before we put the, uh, the fiber cable in just so it doesn't disturb that cable. But we'll essentially have... Uh, uh, some of the small MS switches in uh, across the docks and then connecting to the access points. But we've got one of the access points on the docks working right now. It's actually in mesh mode, um, which was awesome. Uh, I didn't need to do anything to set it up into mesh mode. It simply, you know, it, it finds its closest access point that it can reach and automatically sets itself up in the, in the mesh so we were able to uh, uh, you know, get that you can see it's connected to the outdoor patio. You can see one that's actually in red right now, which is uh, it's kind of neat that we've got um, one of the sites there. We've had uh, power problems in one of our buildings, so the, the power went down. So we can actually see that one of our access points out on the dock is down right now. So it uh, looks like I have to swing in there one night uh, this week uh, after work and 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 uh, figure out what's going on there. And then the gray one, we haven't uh, powered that up. We haven't got the uh, 
the, the mast and that setup for the access point, and that's uh, one of the jobs over the next couple of weeks as well. And then we've got, um, so, th so those ones provide uh, access uh, outside on the docks. Uh, we've, we've basically got full coverage out on our docks uh, for anybody that's down there. Um, you know, the primary use case is for members that, that want to get connectivity. Um, you know, we've, but we've got some other tools that people people use in there. And, and then, as I mentioned, that we've got uh, some security cameras that are that are out in the docks, and we, we're able to uh, catch the bad guys that uh, you know come in uh, and try to uh, essentially steal things from people's boats. Um, and we can uh, we can actually uh, monitor that monitor that in real time and get recordings of it and so on. And then, uh, just in the last couple of weeks, we've actually set up a, a live weather station. Um, and that's that's more for people that um, you know they want to come sailing. They want to see what the conditions are, whether it's becalmed that day, or whether the wind is howling, or if it's raining. And so we we have the ability to we've got some of our webcams that we we have set up on our website that stream live, and so people can come in and see what the weather is. But they also get an idea of of what the you know how the the wind is actually blowing and which direction and, and speed and what it's peaking at and so on. So that's invaluable if you're going to be out there racing and and you know, really want to know if you if you want to come down. Absolutely. I imagine if you're going to drive over there, you want to know if there's an wind first, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Or if it's just uh, you know, if it's just too strong that particular day, and maybe you're better off uh, doing something else. That's true and then, too. Then, then we've also got um, our Wi-Fi access points in the clubhouse itself. That deployment's uh, all done and complete, and we've got uh, I think it's roughly uh, four access points today. You can. You can, I've got that on the overlay map there as well. Um, a couple of different floors. If you hit, yeah, if you hit the, uh, the main floor there, you, you can see uh, we've got our, our main floor access point. Um, and uh, it's essentially right in the middle of the room. It's not, not an overly big facility, so we find a single access point on that floor uh, provides uh, uh, connectivity. But we've got uh, a, a couple on an, uh, uh, in the basement level, and we've got uh, one on an upper level as well. Very One cool. of the... One of the tools I find actually that's that's really interesting is in the um, in, in some of the uh, uh, location heat map and actually being able to see over time um, how how the different access points are are being used um, and and uh, you know where where people are are physically located uh, and, and the whole bit. Uh, um, but yeah, that, that, so that heat, heat map is, is pretty neat. So you can see the distribution of where people are, where they're connecting, um, you know, and, and then play that back over periods of time, right, to, to, see, uh, to see and show how people are moving around uh, in, in various different areas. And, you know, some of the things that we will potentially look at exploring with some of that heat map is that, okay, so on a, on a Saturday, it's really busy outside and you've got a lot of people um, but maybe, you know, we, we don't have a lot of people in the clubhouse and they're not coming into the, the pub or the dining area. Uh, so, you know, is there a way, is there things that we can do offering, you know, specials to, to you know, to get people to come in and have a coffee or, uh, you know, start using and engaging the facilities a little bit more. So it's, uh, it's, it's really interesting in that respect. That's very cool. I love to see that, you know, kind of extending your Wi-Fi network beyond just Wi-Fi, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're getting a couple questions. I want to uh, make sure we have time to ask you all of everyone's questions. Um, someone had asked, uh, "What did you, did you use any software for wireless survey or gauging AP placement, or was it pretty straightforward no, in this case?" No, we didn't. Um, you know, we for for site survey, you know, we we um, we more or less placed access points to you know where we could, um, and you know we had a rough idea of where, you know how coverage. We, we had done some Wi-Fi out, outdoors in the past, so we had a pretty good idea of what our coverage looked like. Um, but so, but we, we placed them not only where we could, but also in, in areas where we, we know where users uh, congregate more heavily. Um, we've got a, an outdoor patio that's there. Uh, on that patio, we, we actually uh, have a plan here to start uh, using uh, a couple of different tablets for the uh, the staff to take uh, orders while they're out there on the patio. So we needed we knew we needed coverage in that area. It was a fairly easy place to do a deployment. So we put one there. Uh, we put some down in the foreshore. Um, and but yeah, no, we didn't need any special tools. But the you know what we get through the dashboard here actually does allow us to you know if we need to move an access point around, we can do that just by looking at what the coverage is. So we we, we actually feel that we saved quite a bit of money in going out not having to do site surveys there. Very cool. 
And and on that that same note, someone else had asked, um, was there a cost benefit model you used to select uh, Cisco Meraki over other options? Um, we you know we yeah we we did that um, you know our our, our team kind of looked at that uh, um, on our committee absolutely um, you know we again we had a rough idea how other deployments worked or you know our, our existing deployments of, of you know having limited access and it, and so it wasn't wasn't so much about the cost benefit per se but it was more um, it was more this intangible cost of of Something broken and not plain old not being able to see it, uh, whereas you know having a access with the dashboard and that gave us that that visibility because as I mentioned that most of the times we're simply not there at the facility and and um, you know this this has been absolutely I can't I can't stress how invaluable it's been being able to do all the remote troubleshooting and put it on a dashboard you know something that's there you can quickly look at from from you know, a, a web browser, or or even I've got the the little app that's on my mobile device to be able to determine if a device is up or down, or what status it's, what, what status it's in, and then you know if there is you know if we've got somebody there on site, uh, we can you know walk them through you know having to restart or reconfigure a device or, or what have you. Very cool. Um, so uh, let's see, let's jump back into our presentation really quick because I think there's a little more content we want to cover, and then we can always come back to the dashboard. Mm -hmm. as well. Um, but I wanted to talk specifically about what devices you deployed, where and why, and we've already covered a little bit of that, but maybe you want to walk us through exactly yeah. what devices. Yeah, for sure. So in, in the club, the Clubhouse network is relatively straightforward. Uh, you saw we've, we're using, we chose to use the MR18. Um, we've got four of those indoors. They provide, you know, just blanket coverage throughout the whole building. Uh, they were small. They, they've got a you know, easy footprint to set up. Um, they are actually connecting back into an MS220, um, and uh, you know that device is providing power to them. Um, we get visibility out of it, uh, and so on. We've actually got a couple other switches in there as well, um, and then then yeah, our, our core firewall and uh, core internet router essentially is is the MX60, and, and we're using that as a firewall. We do a lot of content filtering on that. Um, we do. Like I mentioned in here, some port forwarding to some some uh, devices that need remote access from out. out. Uh, we've got it set up as a as a, a three node VPN to our other two facilities that are remote, and uh, yeah, we do do some traffic shaping on on uh, uh, on some um, aspects of the network. There's just, just some some services that we we kind of we still provide and let them. We just don't want them to hog all of our bandwidth there. Um, the more interesting thing is the outdoor network. Um, so as I mentioned, we, we provide services across the foreshore today. Uh, we're using the MR66 as the outdoor wireless access point. Um, it, it sits up on the a couple of sides of a couple of buildings, and then we actually uh, we built a couple of masts um, that uh, these things sit on out on the docks themselves, uh, and then they connect into the smaller eight port MS220s again to provide. Uh, uh, power for them and connectivity. Um, one of the interesting things that we're doing with that outdoor network as well, uh, not only did I mention security cameras, but we've, we've started to do uh, automated electrical meter reading. Um, and and we, we actually worked, when we when we upgraded the uh, arena facility itself, we put in an automatic meter reading system so that uh, we don't have to have staff now manually going and, and reading each one of the uh, of the electrical meters that that meters power for the individual slips at the marina, uh, as you can appreciate, there's a lot of those, and uh, so it's a, a cumbersome task. So this automatic meter reading system does that for us, um, and and then we're able to uh, essentially uh, connect that into a cloud service that our uh, uh, our, our our provider of the, of the meters provides back to us, and and able to pull that um, metering data down. Um, essentially real time if we want to, but it allows us to automate that to, to, to do the electrical billing on a monthly basis there. So, um, you know, this is, uh, I guess, uh, you know, one of the one of the IoT type or Internet of Things type applications that we're taking advantage of because it, 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 it lowers costs in terms of the staff having to go out and manually read the readers. It, it, um, it, it essentially lowers the number of errors that you can make if you're, you know, manually transcribing each one of the 
uh, of the meters out, out there. And then, and you know, if it was a, a time-consuming task. We wouldn't necessarily do it every month. We may uh, go and, and you know do it on a quarterly basis. But now we can get back to uh, billing on a monthly basis if we if we wish to as well. Yeah, absolutely. I bet that saves a ton of time. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, we're getting a ton of questions. One of them actually is, uh, you know, what key features led you to choose Meraki over competitors? And yeah. I think this slide probably speaks to that pretty well. Do you want to walk through some of these? Sure. I mean, you know, so the, initially, I'll tell you, we having the ability to do the three site that see three site VPN was just, you know, it was just like dead easy to set it up, you, you know, it's, it's, it's literally, you know, click this site, click that site, click that site, there's your three site VPN set up. So that was, that was great. Having the, the content filtering and firewalling, um, so th those are the two things that we knew we were going to use. And, you know, we wanted to make sure that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a family organization, so having content filtering, you know, that's there that we're, we're making sure that we're, we're um, Maintaining that to the, the values of our club that was that was that was all very important and so th those three things in and of themselves were the, the the things that really made our choice simple, but there's a few things that came afterwards that um, now we almost can't live without like that the having the remote dashboard has been just, it just made life so much easier in terms of administering and monitoring the different sites because like as I mentioned one of those sites is, is out uh, it's out on a, a remote island um, you know you just can't get to it on a on a, in a timely matter something goes on and go, goes wrong there and you have to go to it I mean that you know it's it's I, I'm a volunteer so that, that could be a month or more before I'm able to get out to the site so you know this is great being able to have that uh, configuration visibility on it but the other thing that's that's really interesting there is is actually we took advantage of the of the MDM feature, the mobile device management, and we did we did we did a couple things. So that, you know we've got the client that we've loaded up on all of the club desktops today, and and you know we don't use the the mobile part of it per se, but we do it for uh, asset inventory management. So we're able to see all of the club desktops and servers that we've got. We're able to see what OS is running on all of them, what applications are running, how much how much storage is on each one of the devices, how much RAM is being used. Um, and so when it comes time to doing refresh of these devices, we can look in there and saying, you know, you know, when, when Windows discontinued XP um, last year that we were able to say, okay, we've got, you know, seven devices that we need to deploy. We, and we knew it ahead of time. Um, but you know, without these types of tools, we getting that data wouldn't have been readily available to it. It would have been a much more manual process. Um, and then we've we've had many instances where a user um, needs assistance with their desktop. Something's broken. Something's stuck. And and actually having the remote access capability um, to those desktops has also been great. Um, you know, so we you right through the web browser, you can just kind of launch a remote access session. Um, uh, get control of the user's uh, desktop machine, help them work out a configuration, so on and so forth. And so uh, we use that uh, all of the time. So I guess you know all of those things are are kind of the keys to to you know really what's what's made the difference there for us. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Thank you for going over those. I thought I'd just pull up uh, Systems Manager just to show what you're talking about, and yeah. here we can see a whole bunch of devices. We yeah. can jump into one. Um, Windows device here, and we can see where it is, and exactly like you said, um, well, this one's offline right now, but uh, processor utilization, what the storage is like on this device, just a ton of information. So. Yeah, and like I, like I mentioned, you know, we've got a, a couple tablet devices that we plan to start uh, utilizing a lot more for point of sale. So, you know, you know, these are valuable assets, right? And and if they do disappear. Um, you know, we we have actually some tracking capabilities. Uh, you know, if uh, if they come back online, we can potentially help locate it. But at, at the very least, being able to have that that do that inventory of these devices has uh, has been has been great. Absolutely. Let's see a couple other questions. Um, someone asked about your guest network. Are you uh, do you have a password or is it open access? How do you have that set up? No, we have we have a it's a secure SSID. So um, we. Our philosophy today is this is a you know club by the members for the members. We um, the, the members have that uh, SSID and password um, 
it's a you know shared secret, so you know they know where to go to get the password, uh, and then we we change that uh, on a, a relatively uh, regular basis to keep it secure. And we don't we don't have much in terms of vulnerability, but we do have multiple SSIDs set up and treat them differently as well. So we we've got one for our members that um, is just open access to the the internet, um, and that's it. And so you know guests simply are able to get on and off the internet where we have. Uh, a uh, uh, SSIDs there for uh, for staff where uh, we, we've, we've got those two domains physically separated so um, uh, or logically separated so that the you know staff have have access to some of the the back end in terms of servers and that but we're able to completely secure those two separate domains there uh, from from one another. Very cool. Um, and and then what, another question someone had asked, especially since you do have such a heavy uh, outdoor deployment, have you had any environmental issues with the outdoor APs or with heat or cold? No, nothing. Um, and and you know, for people that aren't familiar with the Victoria area, we get a lot of rain here. We get a lot of rain here, um, and so it, it you know we don't get the freezing cold in, in large spells, uh, but we do get it. But um, you know, worse you know in, in Degrees Celsius, it's maybe going to go down to minus five, minus six. So it's not, it's not an extremely harsh uh, winter environment here, but it is a very heavy moisture environment. But um, so far, no issues at all. Actually, it's, um, the, the wireless network's been up; it's been humming along. Um, you know, we we have the odd power bump now and again. Um, you know, if there's a big windstorm or something like that. Uh, but no, so far, uh, knock on wood, it's been a pretty simple environment to uh, operate and maintain, and no, no major issues that uh, have caused us any any grief. Great, that is good news. <laughs> uh, so we've we've talked about some of this already, and actually, someone asked about um, point of sale, which is on this slide. Uh, was that difficult for you to set up, or uh, or was it easy to secure? No, I mean a lot of that was was the pre-planning ahead of time. You know, setting up our our administrative SSIDs and and get, you know, getting devices uh, up on that, mapping some drives to you know local uh, servers that we have that provide the the POS for us. But uh, other than that, uh, no. Once once all of that was done, the deployment has been relatively straightforward and and uh, has worked uh, has worked pretty well. Um, you know, more it's it's. Any issues that we have is more related to the um, uh, the point of sale uh, software, the server software that we're using. Um, less, you know, nothing to do with the network and that uh, for sure. All right, great. Um, and then, uh, sorry, one one last question. Then I I might have to wrap up because we have just one minute left here. How do you manage your network if the internet goes down? You ever had that happen? Well, yeah, we have had it happen. Um, I mean, really, once when the internet goes down on a, on a particular site, well, we you know it depends on 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 where it's gone down, right? So if it's down on at the site in and of itself, of course the the LAN and the Wi-Fi and all that keeps running and operating. You just can't get out. Um, but you know, some of the other things that we we have seen is that you know we we can actually see when a site goes out completely. Um, you know whether whether it's just the internet going out. We've had that on the at the facility on Salt Spring Island that we've got where we've seen the internet feed go down, um, but we know the there's power still at the site, and so that that allows us to to troubleshoot where our issues are for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can I can Perfect. give you any much more yeah, detail yeah. on that. No, I mean uh, that's that's going to be rough regardless if you have a on from a solution or a cloud managed solution if your internet goes yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, and we we are doing more and more POS with this, right? So, um, you know, if, as, as that becomes more and more critical, we may look at redundant internet connections or even using, um, you know, 4G network as a, uh, as a secondary. Right, right now, it's not critical enough to our operations. We can survive without internet connectivity and continue to do business. But, you know, if we, if we start moving to, particularly with our point of sale, if we start moving towards a cloud deployment of that, having a secondary internet access in the key facilities will become critical. Otherwise, we just, we will have no cash flow. Um, so that, uh, that's important for sure. Yeah, that makes sense. And then um, just for those people on the line who might not be aware, if you do lose internet connectivity and you need to make a change to a Meraki device, um, you can directly connect and make some basic config changes like static IP addresses or VLANs on a switch. Um, so that absolutely is available to you. Uh, but obviously, if your internet's down, um, 
usually that's the, the first thing you're, you're checking on. And the MX does have a 3G, 4G failover option as well. Uh, so that is built into those devices. So um, let me uh, just quickly wrap up here. Uh, absolutely uh, encourage everyone on the, f the line to uh, check out the Meraki website. You can actually do a demo of the dashboard if you're curious about clicking around some other places that we didn't get to today. As you can probably see, there are a ton of things we weren't able to cover fully. Uh, but I just wanted to briefly review some of the product families that were discussed today. Uh, here we have our MR wireless access points. We have 802.11n as well as 802.11ac indoor and outdoor as we have talked about today and a ton of features available on these devices. We talked about the guest access and uh, providing the secure um, segments to network for point of sale and for uh, the administrative offices at, at the Royal Victoria Yacht Club, but also a bunch of other functionality which we didn't get a chance to talk about, things like wireless intrusion uh, detection and prevention, being able to identify rogue SSIDs in an environment, also things like mesh routing, actually, which is also uh, we saw on this network today, uh, and some very dense BYOD policies and traffic shaping that you can implement to really optimize your network. Uh, on the MX security appliance, uh, here we have multiple models scaling from small branch offices all the way up to large uh, campus or data center devices that would be pushing you know, closer to two gigabits of stateful firewall throughput. And here we have a, a list of some of the feature highlights. We talked a little bit about the zero-touch site-to-site VPN, and Terry talked about how he could just set up within just a few clicks a secure VPN tunnel between his three different sites. Uh, also some things that are available, content filtering, which we talked about, and intrusion detection prevention with source fire, uh, but also firewall and, um, and traffic shaping built into these devices as well. So kind of like a UTM device that does a whole lot in one single appliance. And also our MS access and aggregation switches, multiple models here. Uh, in the deployment we talked about today, Terry had this A-port POE switch out on the docks and then some other switches, uh, I think you had a 24 port in uh, in your main yeah, office, is that right? Yeah, we have a 24 and a 48, that's right. And a 48, okay, perfect. Uh, but then a bunch of features on these devices as well, PoE and PoE Plus, as you know, but also the ability to do remote packet capture and cable testing, especially if you are remote and need to get uh, deeper level troubleshooting information uh, from the cloud that's absolutely available to you as well. And finally, Systems Manager. So this is for managing those mobile devices. And as Terry mentioned, he was really able to utilize this to uh, get an inventory of all of his devices, check out which applications were installed. And uh, this, this device extends, or this application extends even beyond that to pushing out applications to devices and um, setting restrictions on how devices can be used. So a lot, of, um, a lot of other detail that could be covered on each of these products. Uh, but if you are interested in learning more about Meraki, definitely encourage you to do an evaluation. We do offer free evals, free shipping both ways. So definitely let us know when you contact your Cisco Meraki rep about your free access point from the webinar today. Also encourage you to check out the blog. That's where all of the new updates about anything that's coming out for the Cisco Meraki devices would be posted so you get updates on uh, all of the latest features coming out to these devices. And I want to give a huge thanks to Terry. I think we're exactly uh, on the hour here. Thank you so much for sharing your network with us and really drilling down into uh, exactly you know, how it has been as an administrator managing this network. So thank you so much. You betcha. Thank you. All right. I think we're out of time. Um, definitely follow up with your Cisco Meraki sales rep to get your free access point, and hopefully we'll see you again on another Cisco Meraki webinar. Thanks so much.